Welcome students, we have been given this question 5 raised to the power x negative 3 raised to the power x is equal to 16 and we are expected to solve this question. Now I would like to rewrite this question as 5 raised to the power x is equal to 3 raised to the power x positive 16. So I'm going to be showing you two ways by which this question can be solved. Now, for the first way, I would like to bring your attention to the numbers 5, 3 and 16. Let me write that down. 3, 5 and 16. Now, clearly these numbers are element of natural number. Now, there is a theorem which is known as Fermat's greatest theorem or it is also known as Fermat's last theorem. Now, of course, the theorem was not stated by Fermat. The theorem was stated by Diophantins. Centuries ago, however, Fermat was the one who had claimed to have solved the theorem. Now, according to Fermat's theorem, given x comma y comma z element of natural number x to the power n positive y to the power n equal to z to the power n for n strictly greater than 2 will not have any integral solutions now what is the meaning of this it means you will never be able to find a cube that would be sum of two cubes you will never be able to find a fourth power that would be sum of fourth power and so on and so forth and then Fermat went on to say that he has the proof but the margin is too small to contain the proof. This is the exact words of Fermat. This is exactly what he said. So, for centuries, mathematicians have tried to establish a proof, but un up until 1993, when Andrew Wiles gave the proof for Fermat's last theorem, but that proof had an error, but it was later on solved in the year 1995. So, according to resorting to Fermat's great theorem, if we were to consider this 3, 5, 16 to be natural numbers, then clearly x can never be greater than 2. So, if I were to rewrite this, I can rewrite this as 5 to the power n is equal to 3 to the power n positive 4 raised to the power 2. I am rewriting 16 as 4 squared. So, if I want to satisfy this particular equation, then the only possible value that would fit in would be n is equal to 2. So, this would be the only solution. So, in this case, x is equal to 2 would be the only solution satisfying this equation. Now, let us look into this proof in a different angle. Now, let me consider 5 raised to the power x negative 3 raised to the power x is equal to 16. Now, I am going to rewrite this question in a different manner. So, what I am going to do is I will divide this by 5 raised to the power x. Now, if I do this, I would get 5 raised to the power x divided by 5 raised to the power x, negative 3 raised to the power x divided by 5 raised to the power x is equal to 16 over 5 raised to the power x. Now, I can rewrite this as 1 negative 3 over 5 raised to the power x is equal to 16 over 5 raised to the power x. Now, I would want to move this to the right side. So, I would have on the left hand side 1 is equal to 3 over 5 raised to the power x positive 16 over 
phi raised to the power x. Now, if you were to see these two functions, clearly 3 over phi raised to the power x is a decreasing function. And 16 over 5x, 5 raised to the power x is also a decreasing function. For all values of x, right? Now, on the left hand side, you have what is called as a constant function. So, this is a constant. Now, if you were to draw a graph for the right side, the graph would be, of course, it would be lying above the x axis as x approaches infinity. Now, with regard to the left hand side, this is a constant function. So, this one would be directly moving along y is equal to 1. So, their point of intersection will just be one point. And that is why I would want to resort to the Fermat's last theorems conjecture or the Fermat's greatest theorems claim that x power n plus y power n is equal to z power n will not have any integral solution for n greater than 2. And so, n is equal to 2 should be the only solution that satisfies this equation. It is also imperative to observe that 3, 4, 5 are called as primitive triplets. In fact, to be more precise, it's called as Pythagorean triplets. And since their GCD is equal to 1, we call them as primitive Pythagorean triplets. So, that would be the solution to this question.